launched a flurry of airstrikes on Gaza, just as President Biden had called for a ceasefire. Rick Grinnell is with us, former acting director of National Intelligence. Rick, I, I got a question. Why should Netanyahu hold back now and cease fire? Why should he do that? Well, I don't, I'm not certainly claiming that he should do that. I think the, the people that are are not gaming this out. They're not understanding what's going on. Uh, we, we have a problem here with the Biden administration really falling to the progressive far left woke culture, and it's permeating into foreign policy issues, whether it's climate change, where they're asking Americans to pay other countries to do their part, or the squad getting their way when it comes to being anti-Israel and pro-Hamas. I think this is a real danger when we allow this progressive left wokeism to uh, take over our foreign policy. I, I don't know whether you saw this article. It's in the, It's an op-ed. And it's in the New York Times, and it was written by Brett Stevens. And the title is, If the Left Got Its Wish for Israel. And Brett Stevens points out that if the left did get their wish, it would be a disaster for Israel. Frankly, Rick, I'm astonished to see that in the New York Times of all places, but I'm in very much in agreement with it. Are you? Well, my friend Brett Stevens uh, writes incredibly well, and he does something very good, which is he gives the vision for uh, the end game for what the left is pushing right now. And I think if you read that piece, Brett does a really good job of saying, okay, let, let's let the progressive left go with their current policy. Where does that end up? And he gives you a vision of all of the problems that, that we face. And I think that it's worth a read because, as you point out, it's very troubling to think where this ends, how Hamas takes over, how they push out Abbas. Let's, let's remember the, the Palestinian Authority has not had an election since 2005. Abbas is in his 15th year of his five-year term, which is a, a real problem. But when they do have elections, as Brett points out, Hamas will win. They will take over the entire region, and that's a huge problem, not only for Israel, not only for the Palestinian people, but for America and all of our allies in the region. Democrats used to be in full throttle support for Israel, but they're not now. They seem to be tepid at best for their support. What do you say? Well, look, this started several years ago at the uh, Democratic Convention when uh, Barack Obama was still president. They were attacking the idea of having Jerusalem be recognized as Israel's capital. There were boos whenever Israeli pro-Israeli voices spoke at the Democratic Convention. This was about six or eight years ago, so we've seen it little by little, and frankly, there haven't been enough strong voices in the Democratic Party to stop it. It's gotten worse. You look at the squad now. Nancy Pelosi is, is incredibly afraid of the squad and their power. And so these voices, pro-Hamas voices and anti-Israel voices, are allowed to speak from the floor of Congress. And there are very few people standing up to them, and the White House doesn't know what to do. We see from Jen Psaki, you see from uh, President Biden, they're going to let the Democratic Party fight this out because they don't want to stand up. They don't have the power to push back on the squad. Got it. Rick Grinnell, very well informed, as usual. And thanks for joining us. Always appreciate it, sir. Thank you very much indeed. Thanks to it. We get back to the markets. Again, I'm going to